Today, we bring to you a free story from Granta Magazine. We have A Clean Marriage by Sayaka Murata. Let's get uncomfortable. Keep your clothes on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's kind of Murata's MO. I know this is your first exposure to her. Yes. But I've read Convenience Store Woman, and I was highly interested in Earthling and picking up the short story collection. Speaking of which, uh, the Granta specific release of the Life Ceremony short stories, it, it's in there, but the other release doesn't have it for some reason. I, I can't explain why, but it, it's in a link down below if you want to read for free. But, I mean, she's got stories about cannibalism. She's got stories about, I think I read Incest, too. This is not an author that's just like, hey... Here's a common thing people talk about. It's more like, oh, here's something taboo you're not supposed to talk about. I'm going to write only about those. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting, though, that we think about it this way. And again, I think that's something we can definitely bring up multiple times throughout this story is East versus West or just the world versus the different mentality of the United States in particular of how we view sex, because this story very much revolves around sex. And it's a very mature subject, I, I think, regardless of your culture, your your background or whatever. But sex is always seen as taboo in our culture here in the United States, isn't it? Something that you we don't talk about. You know, we have very strict rules about clothes. Uh, we have very strict rules about, you know, uh, uh, adult movies and things. And a lot of the rest of the world doesn't have, I think, those strict rules that we have. So that's something that we see as taboo that I think is something to point out that maybe not be as taboo in other cultures. Yeah, I think that's a good point to say is that there's a scale and... There are countries, you're 100% correct, that are like more open to talking about it and discussing it and accepting. There are countries that are worse than us, too, that are like, no, this is the way things are. Absolutely no in-between. We're, we're in between these two, right? We're not on either end of the spectrum, in my opinion. But you are correct that there are fully other countries that are more open about that. But that's what I kind of like about Murata's writing is that I think it exists in our, in our canon of, of literature for a reason. Right. There are people out there that maybe they can't talk about it with their friends, even as openly as you and I uh, on the Internet. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's it's almost like this window into what is ultimately the non normal. Right. Like it's it's I don't want to say it's strange, but that might be the word that I can kind of think of, because when I was reviewing reviewing a convenience store woman or women, there was a lot of talk about uh, neurotypical versus the the neurodivergent. Right. And not everybody understands how, you know, some people's brains might function differently. And I think it can be the same with sexuality. Not everybody has the same level of drive, the same thing to which attracts them. Uh, there's romantic versus sexual interactions in terms of like what drives people. It's it's a very complex subject, which, I, you know, I will be open with that. I don't fully understand. I know I had a friend growing up that was asexual. And I learned a lot about that type of, you know, ace and ace flux type of classifications that I don't think, uh, you know, a lot of people don't have typical exposure to. So I think we need to kind of explore that a little bit with this man, because the, the premise of this story is how the man basically puts out this ad that says he wants a clean marriage, right? He wants a place where he can have a partner in life. Okay, that's that's a common term that we hear, but he wants zero sex in in their relationship, in their house. Right. Sex should be a solo thing or something that happens outside. Right. What do you think this this situation challenges in terms of the the, the usual approach that we see to relationships? Yeah. And I think that's the important thing to note here, too, is because we've brought up the idea of um, sexuality and sex and everything multiple times already. But at the cornerstone of this story, I felt like it was mainly about relationships. What is a modern relationship? And that's up for debate. I know that there's a lot of thought about that out there, you know, depending on your personal beliefs and your backgrounds and religion and culture and whatnot. And, and everybody's entitled to their opinion. I think this story might be ch challenging. What is a modern relationship? Is it monogamous? Hmm. Is it, you know, what constitutes a relationship? And I think that what this man wants is he's not asexual. He is just not wanting to maybe, for lack of better words, burden his relationship with this other person with sex. And they talk about that several times in the story of how that sex seems to be something that 
is always somewhat inconvenient and that one partner, you know, almost seems to be, uh, you know, not forcing themselves, but manipulating the other person into wanting to have sex because rarely will it be that both partners are in the same state of arousal and wanting to have sex at the exact same moment. That probably will be rare. And so both people won't enjoy it. So just take it off the table. And so I, I think this man is not asexual, but he's just wanting a emotional pillar. He's wanting somebody that can be his best friend. And they even describe it as somewhat a brother relate a brother sister relationship in the story. He wants somebody that he can come home to talk with, hang out with, watch movies with, have good discussions, eat clean, take care of the bills. And again, it is more like a roommate, but doesn't have, you know, those sexual benefits per se. When it comes to how we define these things, I imagine you know English is one of those things that's constantly changing, right? We don't have a governing body like France that tells exactly how the English language works. I know when I grew up, asexual meant you didn't you didn't want sex, or at least that's what I understood growing up. And I know that's no longer the correct way to think about it that there's a lot more research and a lot more difficulty in describing what does attraction mean? What does partnership mean? You said the man wasn't asexual. Now, that sounds to me like I have to ask the question of, what is your definition of asexual? Because that sounds to me like you're operating under asexual means you don't want sex and there's there's no other parts of, of the scale. Can, can you expound upon that a little bit more? I think that, asexual is not necessarily a person wants or doesn't want sex it's they themselves of how they see themselves sexually not that the want okay. or not of want have you ever heard the term uh like qpp queer platonic partnership or anything like that uh i i in the the, the realms of talking with my wife about things you know of relationships and uh the sexual and relationships she might have a different coin of phrase for that but it, it's probably okay. something to that venue yes okay and then when i said like like ace do you know what that means oh uh, i've heard that that acronym before but i don't know if that's okay. top of my head okay those are i i think they're industry terms like asexual ace like like it, it's just kind of a shortening but i'm just kind of curious because it gets a lot more complex than what i'm used to but you are correct that this man wants, um, I, I get the idea of, you know, some people who've been married for a long time stop seeing each other in the, the carnal romantic element that, that they're just, they're just partners at that point in time. Right. And it's almost like that's what this man's seeking from the start. And he doesn't want to like cross the borders. Right. He thinks that sex is okay outside, but I wouldn't say like we know enough about these characters. I wouldn't say the characters are like super explored. I don't know how well Murata, I don't know where Murata is herself and what she knows or experiences or has researched, but it's not like we understand does this man actually have romantic attachments to the women outside the marriage, but we know he does have sexual attachments to the women outside of the marriage. So it's kind of interesting the way that we are challenged almost kind of like a reverse relationship in a sense where he, he wants the romantic, almost like old school attachments that you have, but wants the sexual explorations outside of the relationship. And that's the complete opposite of what we're taught, right? We're taught that romance and sex are tied together and are meant to be with monogamous people, depending on your religion and your upbringing, of course. And I think that's what's kind of interesting about this relationship because th they still want children somewhat inconveniently, <laughs> according to the narrative, right? Right, and they got to go to the clean breeder program to do that, where it'll it'll bring you the advantages of procreation, but none of the ties of of romance or sexuality in a sense. So it's kind of like there's another challenge. So okay, I, first of all, like we we started talking about this man's you know orientation. What does this clean breed breeder program bring to the challenge of what do relationships and procreation mean to to the species specifically, or even to couples? This is probably the best part of the story. Uh, it, it, it's hilarious. And it, it does take it, I think, to that kind of futuristic idea that if we're going to have children uh, that you don't have to have, you don't have to be in love. There doesn't really have any romantic element whatsoever. It's literally to just procreate the species, that they go to this clinic 
and they basically use machines to have the couple have sex, but not have sex, to get pregnant. <laughs> and I think that that takes an element away. Um, but again, and, and again, the, the characters I felt like just aren't flushed out enough for me to understand their motivations because, you know, they want to have children, but they don't want to do it the, quote, old-fashioned way. So they're going to this new modern way, which, you know, great, applaud them. But then when they have to pay money for it, that becomes the deciding factor because this is way too much money. And, and the man even gets a little bit snarky with the doctor about, you know, the, the money. And they have to think about it before they go through with the procedure. And then after the procedure, you know, uh, and it's very graphic. Uh, it, 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 to me, it was kind of hilarious. He's just like, that That was it? We paid all that money for this? And I don't even know if it worked or what just happened? Uh, and you can just imagine like all the machines and all the bells and whistles. And, you know, I, I just kind of pictured like a young Frankenstein goofy kind of movie going on in the background uh, with the lightning. It's alive. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it, it really does kind of challenge that that stereotype of what does a relationship mean? What does romance intertwined with sex and having a family mean to somebody in 2023? Does it even matter anymore? Do you need it anymore? And I think that story's trying to challenge that you don't necessarily need that. But in the end, we know that it kind of doesn't work out. So maybe you do need that is kind of my interpretation of it, that there that a sexless marriage is a romanticless marriage. I know that's not a word, but I just made it one. <laughs> OK, and I think that is a very common way that a lot of particularly men who I don't know what conversations you've had with your wife, but they tend to see validation in the physical approach, in, in the sexual activity. But there are plenty of people who do have romantic attachments that don't necessarily have like those sexual things. Again, they are not necessarily tied to each other for some people. Right. And, and it's interesting how, to your point, like to have children, you must implant X and Y in order to produce baby. Right? Uh, I see what you did there. And when, uh. <laughs> when a sexless marriage happens, you know, they don't want to cross those things, at least with each other, but obviously they do, you know, with other people. It's, again, like you said, it's not flushed out to know if it came from other people, would it matter? Like, like they only talk about having this this intercourse and children having with each other, essentially, right? Because I didn't, uh, the woman at one point say like, oh, I just ended a relationship like not long ago. Like clearly, yeah, but it, there, go ahead. Yeah, but there is uh, kind of the only tension um, besides the, the the couple having tension of trying to have children. The only other tension is we do find out that the husband does have a long term lover and that that woman contacts the wife. And as a result, there is some issue and the wife finds out about the husband's, you know, sexual escapades, so to speak, and that he likes to pretend to be a baby. Uh, you know, and I think that's kind of interesting that, uh, yeah. you know, that yeah. that that is his preference. And uh, maybe he's ashamed of that. And that's why he didn't want to have a committed relationship. I, I don't know. Again, I'm speculating here again. These characters, I don't feel are very fleshed out enough for us to make that speculation. But I feel like that was very, very interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know enough about the taboo elements of that that role play honestly it's not something that i have engaged in so i don't know how to speak to that <laughs> are you sure um, let's <laughs> you can open up here this is let's... a safe space una <laughs> yeah yeah meanwhile like i was just talking about how like oh, i'm having a hard time talking i got choked too hard I'm like choked by who yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey those those right, mommy um, role play women make big money there's big industry in that they do. <laughs> well there's a whole uh have you ever heard of like the what do they call them squash squash mamas or something like that where like they literally just crush you under their weight basically or there's pony play there's all kinds of things out there man yeah. there's there's a kink yeah. for everybody yeah do you think okay so jumping back to the story do you, do you <laughs> think the fact that they they really left the clean breeder program what it is how it works the fact that the man i think said he couldn't even tell the difference of whether he actually came in her or not and almost like wanted to vomit thinking that he actually did like like that he crossed that that clean marriage border if you will do you think that the, the ambiguity was was obvious and clear by murata but do you think the fact that she left that that boundary as almost undefined 
could be part of the problem with some people with how we have a hard time understanding those people that are asexual or that do have a hard time mixing sexual and romantic attractive feelings because you know there's ace flux people who might be asexual most of the time but sometimes they get aroused right and it's kind of hard to define that in between space in the same way that like you know murata just completely avoids the clean bird uh, breeder process if you will i think it comes back to relationships of one you have to know yourself and what you want and two you have to be able to effectively communicate that with your partner and communication is going to be key consistently through all times of a relationship if it's going to be non-monogamous of some state and the fact that you you have to have transparency in your communication as well and when it crosses that line of secrecy because i feel like the husband was transparent that he had a lover but there was secrecy in what he was doing and there was no mm. transparency of that and i think that is the key here of you know that what is that border what is that boundary and if you set one and you start putting up these layers you start putting up this wall then I think that the, the sexuality and the romanticism and any of it becomes irrelevant because you're no longer upholding your end of the bargain of having an open relationship. Because open relationship means not just open into, you know, sleeping with other people, but is completely open with all communication lines. And that, I think, is the most important thing. And we don't know if that happens in this story or not. Uh, and, and coming back to the ending of, you know, at the end, basically... The way I interpret it was she sees him throwing up there about what happened and subconsciously doesn't want to have a child with him, per se, because she gets rid of it. You know, so I don't get too graphic and get us demonetized. <laughs> uh, no, that's not how I interpreted it at all. Okay. Uh, I, th I it felt very, you know, you bring up a really interesting point about when we have intimacy, you and I have closed relationships, obviously with our own lives, right? There's yes. intimacy there. There's <laughs> things that only she, know well, okay, I guess if you said, uh, well, usually like that'd be kind of awkward, but <laughs> big reveal happening tonight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but um, we have intimacy and things that only our wives know, right? There's intimacy in our relationships with our wives with like, you know, like it's expected that only they know these things that only we can go to that level of vulnerability with them. You and I are bros. You and I are about as close as, as, as friends can get, but there's probably still boundaries between us that we don't cross. Right. Right. I think you bring up a really interesting point about how he had secrets with the other girl, like the, the, the baby play, if you will, because you know, is, is intimacy and sexuality some way tied together, right? Mm, because yeah. the wife was annoyed. Leave me alone. Like, I don't need to know that. Keep that out of my clean marriage, right? It, it, it's almost like there's a certain level of intimacy that, uh, that, that sexuality brings that includes like only that person gets to see that level of intimacy. And it can be totally diverse, di like, divorced in a sense from the romantic element is what I would say. So it's very, it's something that I kind of struggle with because I read this book by, by Angela Chen that kind of just got like talks all about ace, ace flux. It's like all these different sexual ori sexual orientations because I wanted to know more about my friend, right? I, I grew up with him. He, he wants nothing to do with women as man. I remember we were at this concert once and there it was a uh, Oz fest. So outdoor heavy metal festival, girl in this bikini jumping up and down right and he kind of <laughs> looks over her right she she walks away i don't know if the set was over or whatever and he said i kind of didn't want her to walk away and i was like what like he's he's never expressed interest in the opposite sex before like he had told us that he has no interest in them right so there's even those strange fluctuations that we have in some of that that attraction element to being human too i don't know I think the story was really interesting. I agree. The characters are very short, very brief. It's almost like very robotic. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. Murata has a specific style to her characters. I don't want to say that these characters were neurodivergent, which in, in convenient story felt a little bit more straightforward like that. But uh, I, I still think I would still like to read some more of her other works just to kind of get a little bit more completely more rounded feeling of the author because I'm fine with some of the 
the cutting short and letting a reader fill in some of the gaps. But I do enjoy, I think, some of the unique ways that she explores what is ultimately usually taboo subjects. I agree. And you know that I'm the type of reader that I, I like those little details. I like the world building. I like the character development. That helps me flush things out because sometimes my imagination can't do that. And I, I think it leads to good conversation. And to, to loop back to the point and your, your, the, the story as a whole, I think that it, it does come down to relationships. And I think it does come down to that sex is a physical thing, that we are animals, even though we maybe have a higher consciousness, we you know think anyway, uh, or, or think that we can express ourselves better than the rest of the animals on the planet in the Kingdom Phylum class genius family species <laughs> uh it does come down that we do have that lizard brain and that intimacy physically is something that can get two people closer than probably anything else uh they're, they're I, I don't know of any other way to become you know m closer to a person than that and i think that that is something that is very unique and uh, in this story, it kind of explores what happens to a relationship when you don't have that intimacy. And uh, that's, you know, yeah. something that a lot of people may be trying to figure out in a modern relationship. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for exploring. I know this was kind of something that is taboo. I know this is <laughs> something that is a little bit shocking for some people. And I am not saying we, I knew the answers, at least, in any of this. Let us know in the comments down below, like, what did you see in this story? How did you react to these characters, right? There's a lot of different things and a lot of things that I'm sure we can learn along the way. So I appreciate you spending some time and at least understanding what our current view of it is. My name has been Una. Peace. Peace.